Welcome to the Western Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. My name is Jasmine. I'm going to serve as your facilitator for our session today. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping announcements. The first, you can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our panelists at any point throughout our session today. Second, your camera and microphone are off, so we cannot see or hear you. Third, this is just one of many different sessions that we're offering, so feel free to visit your registration site to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, this presentation is being recorded. You'll have access to that recording within about a week or so. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and introduce our first presenter, Emerson College. It seems Emerson is experiencing some technical difficulties, so we're going to go ahead and move it over to Wheaton College. All right, thank you so much. We'll go ahead and share my screen here. All right, so good evening, everyone. Um, thanks so much for taking time out of your schedules to learn more about our institutions. My name is Jason LaPerriere, and I'm an Associate Director of Admission at Wheaton College in Massachusetts and the West Coast Representative. Um, happy to help you all learn more about Wheaton College this evening. In a nutshell, Wheaton is a small private liberal arts college. We are home to approximately 1,700 students coming to campus from across the country and around the world. Just over 10% of our students are coming to campus from international locations around the world. We're an undergraduate focused institution with the average class size between 15 and 20 students. Courses are generally discussion based seminar style um, courses uh, and that goes for your introductory first year courses uh, that you might be taking as well. Uh, all of our courses are faculty taught with 90% of uh, those faculty members having their doctorate or terminal degree in their respective field. In terms of location, we're located in Norton, Massachusetts, which is consistently ranked among the top 10 safest communities in the United States, about 20 miles north of Providence, Rhode Island, and 35 miles south of Boston in a suburban area, which I really feel gives students the best of both worlds in terms of having access to two of New England's largest largest cities via the train station, which is about 10 minutes away from our campus, while also enjoying our beautiful, uh, safe campus as well. Our campus spans about 400 acres and has a very traditional New England feel, as you uh, can tell from the pictures that I've just shown. Um, in terms of ranking and recognition, we've been placed among the top 50 national liberal arts colleges by the Times Higher Education Wall Street Journal publication. This is one of my favorite rankings because it really focuses on student satisfaction. And not only the satisfaction of current students on campus, but also graduates in terms of um, sort of how they feel we prepared them for life after college. Uh, we've also been recognized for many other aspects of the Wheaton experience that you can see up on your screen as well. In terms of aspects that really help to differentiate Wheaton from some of the other small liberal arts colleges you might be looking at, one is definitely our Compass curriculum. Our Compass curriculum is unique in that it is almost entirely open, very few mandatory requirements as part of the curriculum which promotes a high degree of flexibility. Students work closely with faculty and academic advisors to craft an educational experience that is truly unique to them instead of simply completing a standardized set of general education requirements. In terms of the general structure of the curriculum, the only three requirements are an interdisciplinary first year experience course, a sophomore year experience course, which will be experiential in some way, which means it might be an internship, research, study abroad, um, but the idea is that it won't be a traditional uh, sort of lecture style class. Third and final requirement is that you have a major and complete the requirements for that major. Uh, there are a number of optional components to the curriculum, including a number of themed honors programs, and double majoring is a great option for students as well. With over 100 majors and minors, um, that's a popular option for our students. About 25 to 30% of our students double major. Right now, our top three majors are business, biology, and psychology. 
Another unique aspect of the Wheaton experience is that we guarantee all of our students a funded internship or research experience by the time they reach their senior year. Uh, and that's called our Wheaton Edge program. So the two big promises coming from that is that you will have a meaningful experiential learning opportunity by the time you reach senior year, and also that it will be paid. If your internship sponsor is not paying you, you'll actually be compensated directly by the college. Uh, the average eight week summer internship compensated with a $3,000 stipend from Wheaton. 96% uh, of our students live on campus for all four years, and we do uh, guarantee housing for students. We have 19 residence halls and 16 student-run theme houses on campus, which I describe as clubs with housing. Um, we offer singles, doubles, triples, quads, and suites on campus, as well as specialty houses, such as wellness housing. Because so many of our students live on campus, they really take full advantage of getting involved and immersed in campus life. We have 100 plus clubs and organizations, 21 NCAA Division III athletic teams, about 25% of our students participate in varsity athletics and we're part of the NUMAC conference competing against schools like MIT, Mount Holyoke and Babson, just to name a few. Um, in terms of how our students do after graduation, 97% of students are meeting success within six months of graduation, uh, the majority going directly into that first job, um, but grad school is also a popular option for our students. About half of our students within five years will go on to, uh, to graduate uh, school. Just a quick snapshot of the application process. We are a common application institution. Uh, we are test optional and have been for over 25 years. So that's not something new that we've introduced because of the pandemic. Um, we offer a number of deadline programs, including early decision, early action, and regular decision uh, application deadlines, depending on your interest level and when you're able to put forth the best application. In terms of financial aid, we offer merit-based financial aid as well as need-based financial aid. That merit-based financial aid is awarded at the time of admission, um, and we are awarding scholarship to the vast majority of accepted students. The average amounts are between thirty dollars and $45,000 a year, and that's not inclusive of any need-based financial aid that you might qualify for um, by submitting the FAFSA. If you'd like to know more, um, definitely scan that QR code with your smartphone. We have a number of great ways this spring that you connect that you can connect with us virtually. Um, so we'd love to see you at an upcoming virtual event. Thanks so much for your attention. Enjoy the rest of the program. Hello, everyone. My name is Patrick Dean, and I'm the admissions representative from Suffolk University. Let me get my screen share going for you all. And I just want to say thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to learn a little bit more about all of our universities. Now, as I said, my name is Patrick, and I'm the admissions rep from Suffolk. And just to tell you a little bit about our campus, we are located right in the heart of downtown Boston. So we're surrounded by different sites like the Granary Bearing Ground, where Paul Revere, Sam Adams, John Hancock are buried the current Massachusetts State House, the old Massachusetts State House where the Boston Massacre happened, and the Boston Common, which is right in the middle of our campus. So our students have phenomenal access to the city, including all the different sports teams, historical sites, music venues, um, different law firms and tech companies that are right in the area, which really helps with the ease of access to internships for many of the students on campus. Currently, we have just over 70 undergraduate programs for students to get involved in, between the College of Arts and Sciences and the Sawyer Business School. Some of the more popular majors that students like to come in for is really anything related to business, especially with all the different companies that we have located right next door to us in the Financial District of Boston. A lot of students also like to get involved in political science because the Massachusetts State House is right next to us. Boston City Hall is right down the road. And of course, we partner with the Washington Center down in Washington, DC and uh, link up a lot of our state representatives and Congress people and senators to our actual students to get them different types of internships. We also have some different niche majors like um, interior design, which can lead to a master's degree in interior architecture too. And some of our students even come in for radiation science and radiation therapy, working in the chemotherapy department in um, Mass General Hospital. So there's really a lot that you can do here at Suffolk and a lot of different opportunities that we have here for y'all. Right now, we have an average student faculty ratio of 15 to 1 and an average class size of just about 21 students. So we try to keep the class sizes small and your professors are going to get to know your name and know your learning style. 
but you're not going to be isolated on, on campus and you're going to have the city of Boston as a backdrop and really all the opportunities that the city has to offer. Academics are going to be the keystone to any college education, but it's not going to be the only thing that goes into your college experience. We have just over 100 clubs and organizations that students can get involved in. Um, I believe right now Video Gamers Army and Women in Business are two of the largest clubs that we have on campus. And we also have great different leadership programs like our Journey Leadership Program, which takes students on different team building activities all throughout Boston, even going down to DC, Barbados, and down to Florida. And then we have the Student Government Association, which does a great job promoting student interest on campus and running a bunch of different events like our spring concert series, um, bringing, I believe it was Tory Lanes and Post Malone, respectively, the past couple of years that we hosted it. We also offer a ton of alternative break trips, like going down to Washington, D.C. to work for LGBTQ advocacy and racial justice, even going down to Maryland for that, going overseas to Cambodia to work with Habitat for Humanity, or even going out to the Grand Canyon to do some environmental protection. We have 19 NCAA Division III teams on campus, um, pretty much like everything that you can think of, baseball, basketball, cross country, soccer, golf, ice hockey, it is possible to do athletics in the city. We have different sports venues located all throughout the city of Boston, uh, very easy to access, even in our own rec center that we have on campus that has a full gym with great fitness classes, free to use for all students. Um, this year, we were actually able to have a free fitness app that we were able to give to all students um, since they were going remote. And our women's ice hockey coach was actually playing in the National Women's Hockey League um, bubble tournament for the Isabel Cup and making her the only NCAA coach playing in the National Women's Hockey League at the time. So athletics is definitely a big part of campus and they really love to get involved in everything on campus as well. Here at Suffolk, we're also very well known for opening up the globe to our students with our very own campus located in Madrid, Spain. Here at the Madrid campus, you can study there for a semester, two semesters, two years, a summer, or even four years if you do international relations as a major. Even though you're located right in the middle of the University District of Madrid, Spain, all classes are gonna be taught in English, but of course you're gonna be exposed to the Spanish language and the Spanish culture with so many optional guided tours happening throughout the city at all times. It's also home to our Global Gateway Program. This is one of my favorite programs that we offer here at Suffolk, where you can take your first year spring break and spend it at the Madrid campus for minimal to no cost. It is probably the easiest and cheapest way to take spring break in Europe, and it's something I recommend to every single student who's thinking about study abroad, if it might be for them, if it might not be for them, wanna try the Madrid campus, it is a great way to just go there for the week and try it out. When you apply to Suffolk, you can either apply to the Boston campus or direct entry into Madrid, whichever one you wanna start your academic journey at. We also have traditional study abroad opportunities in over, in over 30 countries. Um, we also have faculty-led study tours and our um, uh, different types of uh, global gateway programs too, where you just take a week long studying with faculty members going overseas as well. Right now, 19% of our undergraduate population is international students, making us the third highest percentage in the country, and about 34% of our domestic students identify as students of color. All of our application requirements are right over here with our um, SAT optional, so if you feel like your test scores don't represent you, you absolutely do not have to send them in, and it will not negatively impact you in any way, shape, or form. We do take the common application, and our deadlines are going to be located right here for you all. Thank you all so much. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop it in the chat and I hope and I'll pass it on to you, Mass Lowell. Thank you. Hi everyone. I'm Joanne Germano with the University of Massachusetts at Lowell. I'm actually a regional representative. I cover the West Coast, so I am your point of contact. Feel free to reach out to me with any questions. UMass Lowell is just north of Boston. Chances are you probably haven't heard much of our university or maybe haven't been out that far east. So I like to show a video that's just a minute long. And then I'll talk more about the university. The University of Massachusetts Lowell is a nationally ranked public research university committed to transforming hardworking students into leaders and innovators. With more than 120 majors and more than 70 master's and doctoral programs, UMass Lowell is renowned for its excellence in engineering, computer science, criminal justice, healthcare, and entrepreneurship. 
integrated throughout the historic mill city of Lowell, Massachusetts, UMass Lowell's 18,300 students study in world-class facilities on a vibrant, modern campus. The UMass Lowell Riverhawks compete in the NCAA's Division I, led by its perennial powerhouse men's hockey team. UMass Lowell's focus on co-ops, internships, and experiential learning help explain why its alumni enjoy among the highest starting and mid-career salaries for public university graduates in the nation. So that's a little bit about our university. Here's a quick snapshot. So Lowell's a smaller size city, about 100,000 people, but you get the campus town college feel with the activities that take place, including the concerts, um, the music festivals, the art festivals, the um, college town feel. We're about 11,500 undergraduates, but we have over 500 full-time professors. So our average class size is just 25. We have students coming from every different state, over 100 different countries, so we're pretty geographically diverse. We also have 38% 38 38 of our students um, identify themselves as students of color. All of our programs are direct entry, meaning you start, you start right in the major, there's no waiting around for the classes you need. We even have a direct entry nursing program within as little as three and a half years, you could have your bachelor's of nursing. Most popular, programs at our university are going to be anything in the STEM, business, and criminal justice. We were the first school in the country to have plastics engineering and sound recording technology. Plastics engineering, um, those students do a lot of work with prosthetics. And for sound recording technology, we have eight different recording, recording studios on campus. We also do a lot of four plus one tracks. So if you wanna save yourself time and money and have a master's in five years, you can do that. We also have a UTeach track where if you study anything in the STEM, you can take six extra classes and earn your teaching credential at the middle school and high school level. We take pride in our co-op program, so we are very hands-on. We make sure students get work experience in, whether it's through an internship or a paid internship called a co-op, where you will go out and work with a company for three to six months. Most of our students are paid $25 to $35 an hour in the co-op, and because of them, our students have jobs. We partner with a lot of big name companies, including Bay Systems, Tesla, Raytheon owns a floor of our engineering facility. They hire a lot of our students after graduation. So I always tell students, you can come from the West Coast to study in Massachusetts and come back uh, West with a job because we have company partnerships all over. We even work with a lot of healthcare partners that are top in the nation, including Massachusetts General Hospital and the Boston Children's Hospital. So if you wanna study anything in healthcare, you will shadow a lot of top doctors and nurses in the country. A lot of fun can be had on campus. Um, in a normal year, we have 10 concerts. We've had Drake, Billy Joel, Snoop Dogg come to campus to perform. We've also had Oprah on campus to help fundraise scholarships for our students. We are division one in athletics, so there's a lot of excitement at those games. If you wanna study abroad, currently we have 300 different universities that we partner with in over 40 countries, and you can apply for a scholarship to help cover travel costs for those. We also have lots of clubs and organizations you can be part of and intramural sports too, to help meet people. We have a great living learning community on campus where you can choose to live with specific students of your major. For instance, if you're a biology major, you can choose to live in a biology residence hall where you'll network with other biology students among the four years. We look for a strong B average. We are test optional and we have been for five years. We, can, we plan to continue to be test optional. We have some great scholarships. We start awarding at a 3.25 with an 1170 SAT. That's a $10,000 scholarship. Anything higher, we will go up to 20,000. And all of our scholarships will renew until you earn your bachelor's. I would love to talk to you uh, more about the University of Massachusetts Lowell. Feel free to take my email down. I will also drop it in the chat. Also, if you're looking to check us out virtually, we are having a junior preview day um, coming up this Saturday already. So thank you for your time. And now I'm going to pass it off to my colleague, Alan, with, with another school in the Boston area. Thank you.
Thank you, my friend. Um, hello, everybody. I'm just going to share my screen with you. We'll get going here. Whoa. It's my Zoom. You don't want to see that. You don't want to see that either. You want to see that. All right, Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences actually is the oldest university in the city of Boston. Um, it's been around roughly for about 200 years. Uh, founded originally as just a pharmacy school, uh, but of course, over the years, it branched up into much more than that. Uh, roughly around 7,000 students today, students from all over the world and all over the country, uh, in more than just pharmacy, of course, over 50 or so majors in medicine. Um, we're across the street from Harvard Medical School and we're surrounded by the six Harvard teaching hospitals, which plays into the hands of these majors quite nicely because they're all able to do their internships and research through the Harvard teaching hospitals of Boston. So students coming out of high school who wanna become doctors, vet or dentists, whether that's in, in the medical world of an MD or a doctor of osteopathic medicine, those are eight years, uh, six year majors out of high school. And these include the doctoral or master's degrees that's required to work in that field as well. Our pharmacy, physician's assistant, physical therapy, occupational therapy, optometry, which is seven years, um, nursing, ultrasound, radiation therapy, medical sonography are three-year, four-year degree programs. Um, Four-year traditional programs include health sciences, healthcare business, healthcare psychology with a master's. It's roughly around five health sciences, public health, biology, and... I think I got it all. Chemistry, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. All of our students are surrounded by faculty who have a medical background. We're It seems there was some technical difficulties uh, with Alan's presentation. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next presenter. Nancy, feel free to go ahead and present. Thank you. All right. All right, so I'm so excited to share with you guys about the University of North Carolina at Pembroke. My name is Nancy Reading and I'm the Associate Director of Admissions and I'd like to tell you all the reasons why you should choose to be a Brave. So this first video is just gonna kind of give you an idea about what our campus is like. The University of North Carolina at Pembroke is centrally located between Charlotte, Raleigh, and Myrtle Beach, and our walking campus has everything a student needs. If you're staying in campus housing, you won't even need a car. In addition to Cypress, Pine, Felk, North, and Oak, our traditional residence halls, there are several apartment complexes on and adjacent to campus. Lumbee Hall, the Central Administration Building, is home to Brave Central, your one-stop shop for admissions, financial aid, registrar, and the cashier's office. All of your student administrative needs taken care of by one team in one convenient place. For food and fun, check out the Chavis University Center, where you'll find the main dining hall, bowling, billiards, mini indoor events, and more. A short walk across the UC lawn puts you in the Jones Health and Physical Education Center, which hosts our Division II athletics, as well as exercise facilities and the Aquatic Center. For the highest quality entertainment, the Give Us Performing Arts Center brings Broadway and professional entertainers right to you. If mealtime finds you at the north end of campus, Papa John's and Einstein Brothers Bagels have you covered with meal plan takeout or dine in if you want to eat and study or simply relax. 
On the south end of campus, kick back by the water feature with snacks from Starbucks, or cross the bridge to Cafe 641 inside the library, where you will also find a variety of comfortable study areas, including tech-enabled collaborative spaces. The University of North Carolina at Pembroke has everything you can need in walking distance. For an interactive campus tour with location photos and videos, visit uncp.edu forward slash hashtag virtual tour. For admissions information, visit uncp.edu forward slash admissions. So that just gives you an idea of what our campus is like if you haven't had the opportunity to visit. Um, as you can see, um, we have a beautiful campus with a lot of opportunities, um, but it's very compact, so easy to navigate. We're considered a medium-sized institution with about 8,200 students for our total enrollment. Um, we offer 41 different undergraduate programs and 18 graduate programs. Some of our most popular majors are education, business, psychology, exercise, sports science, and nursing. We also keep our class sizes small with a student to faculty ratio of 18 to one and an average class size of 20. University of North Carolina at Pembroke has a rich tradition. Um, we were, were the only institution founded by American Indians for American Indians. We were originally founded as a college to teach American Indian teachers. Um, so our, we are considered a minority serving institution and our American Indian heritage, as well as all of the various cultures represented on our campus are extremely important to us. Diversity is one of the best parts of UNC Pembroke. So we do offer NCAA Division II athletics with a variety of sports. So whether you'd like to um, kick back at a football or basketball game, um, cheer on some volleyball players. Um, we also offer swimming, um, softball, soccer, cross country. Um, there's something for everyone. Um, and then we also offer a variety of intramural sports if you're not ready to play at the NCAA Division II level. Um, we have 100 and plus clubs and organizations, including a thriving Greek community, study abroad opportunities, living learning communities, and service learning. UNC Pembroke is also a North Carolina Promise institution. Our out-of-state tuition um, and total estimated cost is extremely affordable at about $19,500 per year. $2,600 of that is health insurance. So if you already have your own health insurance, that cost can be waived. We also offer a variety of scholarships. So we do encourage you when you're admitted to complete our Brave Assist Scholarship app. UNCP currently is test optional. So if you're ready to start your journey this fall, you don't have to worry about test scores. However, um, if you are looking at fall 2022, we would encourage you to go ahead and plan to test just in case um, our determination of test optional is made by the UNC system. Um, and then we encourage you to apply and make the grades and then choose to be a brave. I'd love to answer any of your questions in the chat. Also, I encourage you to visit our website at www.uncp.edu or reach out to me directly. So thank you so much, and I hope you'll choose to be a brave. Hi, everyone. I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen here. And hopefully everyone can see that OK. Thank you all so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And sorry, I bought the mix up earlier. There was a little bit of an email error, but my email is now in the chat. So if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. My name is Amy Mitchell. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admission for Emerson College and regionally based. So in um, California, same time zone. So if anybody has any questions or concerns, you can reach out directly to me and I'm always happy to help. Emerson is a really special place. I always call it a best of both worlds school. And I call it that for a couple of reasons. One of them is our really incredible location, which is directly across from the Boston Commons, right in the heart of the theater district in Boston. And I think one of the things that makes it so special is that we are an urban campus, but I always say we're the world's teeniest, tiniest urban campus. The campus is about 12 buildings in a two block walking radius, which means it takes maybe 10 minutes to walk the entire, entire campus, which is especially nice for my California students when it snows out and it's a fast walk around. So you really get that comfort, comfort and confidence navigating a city, but in that smaller, more campus-like environment. 
we have been around, as you can see, an awfully long time and are a school that's really committed to keeping to that small size of about 3,800 students. So again, I always say we're on the big size, big side of small. We're not teeny tiny, but we are still a school where you're running into some people that you maybe haven't met before in the past. Um, being in the theater district in Boston means that we have some pretty incredible theater spaces as the one I'm virtually sitting in now. These theaters were built in the early um, late 1800s, early 1900s, and we have three of them that we have revamped back to historical standards. So they're pretty incredible spaces. Classes, as you can see, are going to be on the smaller side. It's important to us that students have that chance to really interact and be involved in their classroom, to have their voices heard, um, to get to know their faculty as well. We have students coming from all over the country um, and all over the world, as you can see, and that again is another piece of the puzzle of what happens in the classroom environment is that you're hearing from such a wide variety of people and different voices with different life experiences and that to us is part of the importance of the educational process. Um, we have five residence centers on campus. We do require that students live on campus the first three years and part of that is because we are in such an expensive inst uh, city. I was going to say institution. That's actually not true, um, but we're in such an expensive part of the city being in the theater district and we really want students to be able to live in a more affordable way which is on campus housing um, rather than trying to get an apartment and be 45 minutes um, by train to try to get back and forth so that's something that is something we are really committed to having students be able to do um, we are a unique institution in that we focus solely on the arts and the communications and are very committed to the liberal arts requirements though you can see they're a little bit different than most liberal arts requirements um, we believe in educating students as entire human beings and that's part of that liberal arts education process. Um, all students will take a foundations level year, which is all based on communications, including writing and speech. And then we break down the rest of our uh, general education classes across a variety of different areas. One thing that is always, I think, fun to tell students and unique to us is that students that have C's are better in their high school math will have the math requirement, which is quantitative reasoning waived. And students that come with up to three levels of a foreign language will have those courses waived as well. And then students will take a pretty wide variety across different areas of interest um, in other areas to build up those general education requirements. And they're very unique to Emerson. So for instance, the politics of water is a science class where students are literally studying water as a commodity. Um, um, what happens when you don't have access to clean water? How do you build cheap filtration systems? Um, all sorts of really unique things in a class that is your kind of typical science class. Again, as I said, we break down ourselves across the School of Communications as well as the School of Arts. So the School of Communications covers a pretty wide variety of majors. We're incredibly well known for our business program, which is a more arts related business program. That of that program is Wes Jackson. He's very famous in the music industry. So these students actually will even get to kind of participate in Shark Tank and start it, which is our own version of Shark Tank, where they actually get funding to start their own businesses that often take off and do quite well. Um, we have communication sciences and disorders, which is going to be like speech pathology or being a speech therapist. A number of areas in general communications, um, also very unique to us, is our strong political communications major, where students will spend a semester in Washington, D.C., public relations and sports communications. We're consistently ranked as the top journalism school in the country and very strong in marketing as well. As you can see, we have three of these global programs. That's a really a particular mission of our presidents to have our students be very globally aware and engaged. And so for these programs, students will be able to spend their first two years studying in Australia or Switzerland and then spend their last two years studying in Boston if they choose. And then, of course, we have our entire School of Arts. We are the only college in the country where you can get a Bachelor of Fine Arts in comedy and a very strong comedic writing program is a part of that as well. We have another global program in film art, which is actually in conjunction with Paris College of Art in France. So students will actually graduate within three years and they'll spend three academic years studying at Paris and then they'll spend their summer studying in Boston. Not a surprise that we have a number of performing arts programs as well. Again, very strong in anything to do with theater. So quite a few performing arts programs available for students, anything from musical theater, acting, set design, anything in between you can think of. We're also in the top 10 film schools in the country. Students do keep their own rights to their films and they will start shooting right away that first semester. Um, so that's a very strong program for us as well. And then of course we have animation, game design, photography, all sorts of things within that area. And then again, we are in that more artsy side, so it's not a surprise that we're incredibly well known for anything in creative writing and writing literature and publishing as well. My time has gone fast. We're also strong in liberal arts um, and students can build their own majors. 
And then we also have a number of programs within some of these um, global areas that we talked about. Those are just to give you a sense of what the campuses look like. Really cool minors. We're going to kind of move forward. We actually have two other campuses. We have a campus in Los Angeles as well as a campus in the Netherlands. Um, the LA campus is designed for students to spend a semester studying in LA and then from there being able to do a really intense internship that will hopefully lead to a job. And our Netherlands campus is an actual medieval castle with a moat and a drawbridge where students will actually get to live in a castle for a semester. I just want to move forward really quickly to the application process, which is we are a Common App school. The easiest way to apply is to use the Common App. We have been test optional since 2017, so that will still be the same for this year. And we are early decision, early action, as well as regular decision. Some majors will require a few unique things, as you can see. And um, my email is also in the chat, so please feel free to keep in touch with me as well. So thank you so much. In earlier, we were experiencing some tech difficulties. So we're gonna give that institution the opportunity to um, come back up for another minute to finish the remaining portion of their presentation. Okay, thank you. Sorry for the vanishing act. I'm not quite sure what happened there, but uh, we'll get back to where we left off. And internships through Harvard Medical School. So no matter if you're a pharmacy major, a PA major, a PT major, a nursing major, uh, yeah, I'm able to get experience in areas such as HIV, cancer, diabetes, pediatric, pediatric oncology, oncology, nuclear medicine, ambulatory care, wide variety of areas. We're a member of the colleges of the Fenway. So students who are majoring in medicine can take an art class, a music class, can also study abroad and get involved on top of the 50 clubs and organizations and 26 club sports that we have can also get involved in the colleges of the Fenway as well and any clubs or organizations that those universities have. Dining facilities nowadays are a lot better than what they used to be, that's for sure. You can have a suite style where your kitchen and bathroom is in the dorm uh, and or just a traditional style, but uh, certainly not the closets I feel we all slept in back in the day when I was a college student. Free to apply, no application fee. By simply applying, you're automatically considered to be eligible for scholarship money, SAT, ACT optional, Common App, um, guidance counselor or teacher letter of recommendation, the Common App, and I definitely do well in biology and chemistry. It's medicine, so you definitely want to do well there. Um, early action one, November one, December one, early action two, not binding, regular decision February 1st. Make sure that you have your financial aid all set and ready to go by March 15th, and we're private school and a lot of state tuition fees, so deadline's May 1st. Um, once you uh, applied, you're going to be able to track the status of your application in the form of a portal, which is nice, so no more waiting around in the mail. This is an uh, example of some of the scholarships that you can receive, and as long as you maintain a 2.5 GPA, they're renewable each and every year, and to wrap it up, hopefully under that minute, that's my contact information. Sorry about the vanishing act. Now you see me, now you don't, now you see me again. So <laughs> here's my contact information. Thank you to our awesome host for giving me the chance to pop back in. Thank you, Ellen, and thank you to all of our amazing presenters. With this said, that concludes the presentation portion of our sessions today, but we're now gonna transition to the Q&A. So I wanna encourage all of our panelists to return. Feel free to turn your cameras back on and I am gonna pose a question to the group. In the meantime, to all of our attendees, feel free to drop any questions that you may have in that Q&A section. The first question reads, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And let's start um, with the first college that presented. Um, so I would say so some advice on try to enjoy it, have fun with it. Um, this is a great opportunity to really take stock of who you are, how you learn, what environment would suit you best. Um, so really try to have fun with it. Don't think of it as a chore, but think of it as a, a great way to take stock of yourself and, uh, you know, to find your for your home after high school. Uh, probably one of my biggest pieces of advice is look at a diverse range of schools, which is exactly what you're doing right now. Look at big schools, small schools, urban schools, rural schools. Just look at all different types of schools because you never know which one is going to really call out to you and which environment you're going to feel comfortable in. So that's usually my biggest piece of advice for students. 
Mine is kind of similar to what Jason said um, with along the lines with having fun, just relax with it. Understand that we were once in your shoes too. So don't um, feel bad or don't hesitate to reach out to us specifically with any questions. Um, we're here to help you. We're here to help you get in. And also we can advocate for scholarships for you too. Yeah, I'm just gonna echo what Joanne said and she really hit the nail on the head. I think the best thing you can do is reach out to the admissions office, uh, you know, instead of going off of what somebody in class or in your school said about a school, just reach out to us and we're the ones that a lot of us make the decision on your applications as well. So we'll be able to give you the clear, honest answer for what you're looking for. I think I would echo what everyone else said too. Um, we're definitely the Office of Admissions, not the Office of Denials. Uh, so we would much rather um, give you an opportunity to talk to us and try to find a way to get you in um, than have to send out a denial letter. So we're gonna do everything we can for you. So I, I always talk a little bit about this because I know the process is so incredibly stressful. And I always point out to students that there's a little bit of a power shift that happens in the admissions process. So as you're sort of going through the application process and definitely trying to um, apply, to app to apply, you're thinking, oh my gosh, I hope they admit me, I hope they admit me. And then once we admit you, we know you have a bunch of schools you applied to and you have a choice to make. So suddenly you have all the power and we're going, wait, we hope they pick us, we hope they pick us. So be a little more you know, relaxed through the process, know that there there is some stress that will happen, but know that the right thing will happen. You know, listen to your gut and you will make the right choice and the right decision will happen. You'll end up in the exact right fit for yourself. Great advice from the group. Um, next question here. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? And again, feel free to respond in the order in which you present it. Um, so my favorite uh, events uh, on Wheaton's campus, we have uh, something, uh, an annual tradition, which had to be put on hold last year, um, but excited to see uh, come back this year, which is our annual head of the Peacock Regatta. Um, it is a do-it-yourself boat race. Uh, we have a pond on campus um, and students enter in teams. They might be a residence hall floor or an athletic team, uh, and they have to build a boat out of non-traditional boating materials and take a lap around, uh, around the pond on campus. And the winning boat actually gets to take a lap with the college president. So it's a lot of fun. There are many more boats that sink than not, but that's that's all part of the fun. Uh, probably my favorite uh, tradition on campus is one that first year students do in their very first week, which is our boat tour of the Boston Harbor. So all the first year students get together and take an awesome boat tour of the Boston Harbor. It's probably the best way to start meeting your classmates right away, getting a nice tour of the city and just getting right involved in Boston. My favorite thing will be our United in Blue night. Um, so we don't have football. We have ice hockey. That's our big sport on campus. That's what brings our sense of camaraderie that football has at other institutions. So our United in Blue is our first home opener for ice hockey. And those games usually sell out. Our students have their own blue shirts, their own little cheers. So those are just a lot of fun. I'd have to say our harvest ball dance, a little nice elegant evening where everybody dresses up and really gets to know each other and just has a wonderful time. Um, there's dancing, there's all kinds of stuff. So that's that's my favorite for sure. Um, I would say my favorite at UNC Pembroke is um, our Lumbee homecoming event that happens on um, July 4th. And so our local American Indian tribe does their whole homecoming events with um, the American Indian dancing and all their arts and crafts things and the beading. Um, and it's just a really great way to experience the culture and really see how the university is really part of that community. We do something a little bit unique. We have in what we call the Evie Awards, which is kind of our version of the Emmys, though we couldn't call them the Emmys for obvious reasons, but students walk a purple carpet, they get dressed up, they're host, and they get awarded for all different, all sorts of different things in their majors. It's the largest uh, multi-camera student award show anywhere in the entire world. So very fun event for Emerson. Again, thank you all for sharing. So we are approaching the end of our time here for our college fair, um, but I do have a few closing announcements.
So as you exit from this session, a survey will appear. It's approximately four questions, but please complete the survey. It's extremely useful for us as we aim to improve our virtual college fair offerings in the future. I also wanna remind you to sign up for additional sessions. And finally, a recording will be available within about a week or so. With that said, I wanna thank our amazing presenters for joining me, but I also wanna thank our attendees for taking time out of your busy day. Um, I hope everyone has a great evening.